How's it going? These angles are weird. Um, how's it going, y'all? I'm just gonna set up my chat over here for my live. What's up? Now, I haven't gone live on Instagram in a million years, so I don't know what's gonna happen, but I wanna say happy Valentine's Day. I'm on my YouTube channel as well over here. So let's open the chat if it will let me. I'm gonna sneeze, I have to sneeze. It's not good, hang on. Hello, hello, thanks for joining. I just wanna open the chat on YouTube. Susan is here, Marlena is here, hello. I just wanted to go live, cause like, I don't know, it's Valentine's Day, I'm in a good mood because I got an adjustment, I went to the chiropractor. I feel like he gives me an attitude adjustment. <laughs> Um, and so I feel so much better and I've gone twice now, two weeks in a row. And like, I just, I friggin' love it. Hang on. I got to pop out the chat here. How do I do this? Pop out chat. One second. Popping out the chat. How do you pop out the chat? This technology. Pop out chat. There we go. Got it. Sherrod is on YouTube. So what's everybody doing for, yes, it has been a minute. There's Jasmine. I haven't gone live in a million years. Um, Stevie's in the background. Wait, where is she? She's sleeping. Stevie. <laughs> it's blurred out on Instagram. This is like a happy Galentine's, happy Valentine's dual live stream. Um, Allison's here. Hi, thank you. I, I think they cut my bangs too short to be honest with you. It looks a bit strange, like a wig. It's not a wig. The bangs get cut different every single time. It's really annoying. It's the only annoying thing about having bangs. Um, so I thought I would just jump on here to whatever, like say hi, answer questions. If you have questions, if you don't, that's fine. I was also gonna do like a little update on just like some love related things like dating and whatever. Um, there's really not much to say other than that it's like a dead zone over here. And I am going to be celebrating Valentine's Day by watching season six of Love is Blind. Uh, at some point today. I do have my boo-boo. I'll be picking him up later. Um, my son. Uh, so once he goes to bed, then I will be diving right into season six of Love is Blind. Who's excited? Who's already started watching? Because it's like out today, at least in the United States. I don't know about in Canada. Brian Bolton is on YouTube. Hello, Amanda C. and Mandy and Sharada are on YouTube. I'm going live also on Instagram, by the way. So tell me what your Valentine's Day plans are. Um, all I'm gonna do this afternoon is try to um, make myself some Rice Krispie treats, vegan ones, that was my plan. I went to the store. Um, I have some leftover Rice Krispies from the holidays. Um, thanks, I'm getting so many comments on my hair. I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like the bangs need to grow just like a little bit for it to look normal. I like just got them done and they're like too short. But anyway. Amanda said she forgot about Love is Blind. How could you forget? I've been counting down the days. Like, I think I knew about season six, like maybe way back in November. And I've been like waiting, waiting, waiting. Also been walk, IG messes up my voice. Uh-oh, why? Is it because I'm blocking the microphone or I'm on my old phone? Tell me if it sounds bad. I was trying to like... <clears throat> Popcorn Rice Krispie Treats. Yes, I've been seeing people make this on TikTok and I don't know if I like the idea of that. But they're also not letting them set. I saw this girl eating just like sticky, gooey popcorn, like not as a bar, like a popcorn Rice Krispie bar. So, I mean, kind of odd. Um, oh, IG has a glitch. That's annoying. IG's been like very glitchy. Oh no, it sounds super deep. Oh no, what does it sound like? What happens if I talk like this and then it does it? Sharada's watching from India. Hello, that's cool. And Sarah from Ecuador on YouTube. Aaron Wilson. Do I still listen to Abraham Hicks? Sometimes, but not very much. I'm definitely not as um, obsessed as I used to be. Um, not really for any reason other than, well, no, there's definitely been maybe a reason in that i think i went a little too far one end by the way as you know with all that abraham stuff i couldn't see outside of it i couldn't it was like a hard and fast like no this is the way it is and i think i found some holes and just have a little bit more perspective than i used to um so 
that's where I'm at with that stuff. I still meditate and listen to different things, but Abraham, I used to listen to like all day, every day, and I don't do that anymore. And you know, listening to anything too much, I think does brainwash you. So like, you know, just be aware of what you're listening to. <laughs> I'm also easily influenced, to be honest. Um, there was another question. Oh no, Jasmine says she's gonna eat red velvet cake later. That sounds delicious, vegan red velvet cake. Yeah, I feel like today you should eat some comfort food, some treats, treat yourself. If no one else is treating you, treat yourself. Screw everybody else. Um, do I ever make the recipe for my cookbook? Do I ever make recipes from my cookbook? Yes, all the time. Uh, sometimes I just like improv them, but um, yes, definitely. Saber Len says she has some vegan truffles, or this person, I don't know if it's a girl, sorry, will be stuffing vegan truffles into her face later. How do you move on from your first heartbreak? Oh, that's question is here from Sabventure on Instagram. How do you move on from your first heartbreak? Well, I think surround yourself with people that you love, family, friends, pets, whatever. Um, watch some good TV shows. Oh, I don't need this chat open. I can see it right here. Okay, I'm closing my computer. Um, Sorry, I'm sniffing because I'm getting over a cold. And now my nose is running. So do that. It just takes time, honestly. I don't know what else to say, it just takes time. Um, and especially if that person didn't do something atrocious, then it's really hard to get over. I feel like when someone does something to you that's like so enraging, it's like easy to be like, okay, see you later. Glad that happened. Um, but if it's like a thing where it's just not working out or it's just like a mutual thing where they break your heart, then yeah, that sucks. And I'm very sorry to hear that. I'm sure there's lots of people going through that. I think what's annoying about Valentine's Day is sometimes, oh, Paul's here. Hi, Paul. Sometimes, um, what was I going to say about Valentine's Day? Oh yeah. It's like, we don't allow for other things on Valentine's Day. Like you could be grieving, you know, there's always these holidays that like make us think of things. And so I think it's like, it doesn't have to be a day about whatever, like commercialism says it's about. I mean, I think it's great if you're in love and you have someone and you can celebrate, you should be, and someone should be doing something for you. Um, whoops, my TV. Um, and if not, love yourself, give it to yourself. Um, like I said, I'll be watching Love is Blind today. Sad Venture said they didn't do anything wrong, just ghosted me completely. Oh, then screw that person. If they just ghost and they're not even have the courtesy and respect to like explain themselves, then they ain't worth your time. That maybe isn't what you want to hear. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but um, I'm not into ghosting. I think you should explain yourself, even if it's just like, I don't think this is a connection. I don't think this is the connection I'm looking for. I don't feel the vibes. Say something, no ghosting, okay? Especially, um, at any stage, I mean, at the early stage or at the, I mean, God, if you're ghosting someone after being with them in a relationship for a while, that's pretty bad. That means they're emotionally immature, so screw them. Ain't nobody got time for emotionally immature people. I mean, I basically have dealt with that my entire life. <laughs> so my new goal is to <clears throat> stay single until I meet someone who's not emotionally immature, um, which I think, unfortunately, I believe is very hard. Um, I am attracted to men unfortunately and it's very common amongst men to be very emotionally immature uh so stay clear uh if you follow me on instagram here you've been noticing i've been sharing lots of stupid funny dating memes and like relationship memes because i think the only way to kind of get through like i don't know a bad attitude is being funny um and i've been working through my bad attitude when it comes to relationships and look it's whatever go through that period if you need to it's not gonna last forever the audio is very low hmm i'm like really close to the phone i don't know what's going on brian bolton said he's making the <clears throat> hot for food lentil walnut burger buns later tonight Ooh, delicious allison also gave some good advice get over break up eat good healthy food take time for yourself take walks and then party and also don't rush to like um get back out there. I mean, I think that's like everything. Like don't force yourself to just like, you know how they say, oh, to get over someone, get under someone. Yeah, that might not really work. Like that might make you feel worse about yourself. I think it's more important to like be good to you. Uh, Pistachio said, I was ghosted after three and a half years of a relationship. 
God, people are so fucked. Like, who does that? It's so rude. But also, screw them. If they're gonna do that, they are not worth your time. And unfortunately, you might feel like you wasted time. Um, but it's the ultimate lesson. And I'm trying to learn this too, is that it wasn't a waste of time because there's lessons and things and growth. It's really weird that 32 people are watching on YouTube and 32 people are watching on Instagram. That's so bizarre. Subventure said, I think that's what's happened. He wasn't ready and I fell too hard. Yeah, that's okay. And you know what? I have to commend people for falling hard. There's actually nothing wrong with that. If you have the capacity to feel things, that's good. That is a good thing. People who are guarded and afraid, which is often the case, which is why that person's ghosting you because they're a coward, you have more capacity than them. I love these dating stories. Share away. A Michelle on YouTube said, I reconnected with someone I had a huge crush on in high school and it's amazing. It's long distance, but I love the road trips to see him. How fun is that? I think long distance can be fun. I did it for a while as well, a long time ago, and it can be fun um, if you kind of have a good perspective on it. Otherwise, sometimes what happens is you become like a jealous person or whatever, like sometimes it happens to me. I just don't like the distance, but what's happening in my later years, I'm a little bit older now, I'm in my 40s, it's like I am less attached or my goal is to become less attached to people. That's not necessarily a healthy thing to get super attached, in my opinion, and that's often what happens to me. Let's see. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. Oh, Anne is watching. Hi, Anne. I thought you were in a relationship with your baby daddy. Nope, we are not in a relationship. I am a single mom, Maroonie. We're co-parenting. He's still around, but we're not together. Oh, Susan's watching on both. So maybe people are watching. How come, why are you watching on both YouTube and Instagram? Oh, Megan made the strawberry cookies and added chocolate. Yes, you could definitely add chocolate and eliminate the popcorn. I made popcorn, strawberry, pink, pink popcorn cookies that are flavored with strawberry as part of my Eat It by Hopper Food membership uh, recipe. So if you guys are members, um, Oh, bye, Allison. If you guys are members, you can make that recipe. It is the members only blog. I have a paid blog in addition to the free blog and there's exclusive recipes there if you wanna become a member. That's what the pink cookies are all about. Um, Susan said, yeah, codependency is not good. I fall into that a bit too. Yeah, I think it's very common. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. It's common for women, I think, because women are more emotional. We have more capacity. We get excited. We want love. We want a partner. Oh my God, I listened to something kind of depressing on TikTok. I'm on the right side of TikTok, I'll tell you this. The algorithm is feeding me really good relationship, dating advice stuff, or just like stuff about prioritizing yourself and decentering men. Obviously, I'm looking at kind of like heteronormative people's perspectives. Um, I got some good questions on YouTube that I will be answering in one second, but I just wanted to finish this thought on this thing that I watched the other day about the, how hard it is okay and this maybe is more applicable to me but maybe it's good to hear it if you're younger than me because I'm just realizing this now as well and I'm in my 40s to grieve okay how do I word this it's so difficult to grieve the reality that the happily ever after doesn't exist and this isn't like a bitter like negative perspective it's just that women are looking for a happily ever after and men are not that is not what men want um, you can look this kind of stuff up on TikTok TikTok if you want to see the people talking about this. I don't think I'm an expert. It's just an interesting perspective is that we've spent our whole lives being conditioned to think that we need to be in partnership, that we need to do everything for a man's attention and get their attention and get their approval. And men don't run their lives to get that from us, right? And they, a lot of the time, don't want to get trapped, married, settled down, blah, blah, blah. And they've been conditioned to actually have the... Um, I don't know, freedom, confidence, privilege, and all these things to not feel the pressure to do that, whereas like we as women do. Um, so anyway, I'll just leave it at that. It's an interesting concept that we have to grieve the fact that the happily ever after doesn't exist and that we really should be finding happily ever after within ourselves. That's not to say you won't ever have a partnership or that that doesn't exist, but it's just not the norm. It's not like the most common statistical thing that happens. Um, and I think women set themselves up to be disappointed a lot of the time because our expectations are completely different than men's and we're not after the same things. Okay, I've got lots of good questions. 
Ella Gulbin here on Instagram says, I remember you were manifesting love with your last partner. Anything you would do different next time or any other lessons? So, yeah, I think there was a time, and I, you know, I haven't watched my old content in a long, long time, so I don't know what the hell I was talking about, but I was probably, at that time, from the breakup with John, disappointed by the idea of love and partnership, getting into meditation more, manifesting Abraham Hicks, blah, blah, blah. So I thought if I just change my perspective and my thoughts and beliefs and my limiting beliefs and yada, 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 and do all this healing work, I'll somehow call in the right thing. And I, I pretty much called in the wrong thing. <laughs> Although it's hard for me to say that because the what I'm realizing actually just right now is calling in the love thing. I think it had more to do not so much with the person, the man, but more me, and then finding the ultimate love of motherhood and this other being that I'm in love with. Not in that same way, but like a different type of love that I didn't even know existed. So now I'm realizing like maybe the work I did worked because I got to a place in my life where I actually I look like Ronald McDonald. What? How do I look like Ronald McDonald? He doesn't have long, beautiful locks like me. <laughs> doesn't Ice Spice look like Ronald McDonald? Sorry, I had to read that because it's just so funny. I don't know if this person's a troll. I look like I'm 80. Okay, they're clearly a troll. Well, anyway, go away. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's actually what I was probably calling in without realizing it. Um... I don't think I would do anything differently. I mean, that's really hard to wrap your head around when something doesn't work out the way you think. But I obviously wouldn't do anything differently because now I've got this beautiful boo-boo being in my life that's changed my life forever. And I obviously would never take that back. Okay. What's my opinion on... Brian's asking, what's my opinion on age differences in romantic relationships? I met a guy, but I'm 10 years older. Mm, I think that's fine. I think a 10-year difference can be okay. Um, I think age differences can be fine. I think there's definitely examples of it being okay and working out. I think mm, in my past relationship, a couple of relationships ago, I was six years older. And I do think the age eventually was a thing. Uh, but again, then I dated somebody a couple years older than me and kind of the same issues presented themselves. So again, I don't think age determines your emotional maturity. I think it can in a lot of cases, but people who do the work and people who are self-aware and people who are intentional, you know, have the capacity for so much more. So I don't think it matters. I think it depends on your connection. Um, I think that's exciting. And I wouldn't, Brian, try to let, I wouldn't, um, I would try to stop yourself from allowing the number or the age thing to like mm, get ahead, get, get in your way or get in your thinking or in your judgments. But if everything's going great, then I don't think it matters the age. Um... P. Key says, I'll be 36 and feeling the same vibes as you. Less attached is the goal, less disappointment. Yeah, yeah. I don't think being attached, like, it's like, okay, here's another thing that I've kind of recognized. And this is not, this is something I've recognized for a long time. This idea that, and you know, there's books you can read on this. There's a book called Getting the Love You Want by Harville Hendricks, which is about the idea that we attract a partner who is essentially you're recreating the dynamic you had with your primary caregiver or givers. So whatever dynamic you're comfortable with, with your dad or your mom, even though it's probably dysfunctional and lacking in a lot of love, you will actually attract someone that recreates that same dynamic and you don't even realize it's going on because it feels so comfortable and familiar to you. I think that that is very true. It resonates a lot with me and my experiences. And I think what has happened in the past is I get attached and attracted to the person that's recreating that terrible dynamic. We're creating this terrible dynamic. And it feels so normal to me that I think I'm attracted to them and that I'm meant to be with them. But actually, it's like a warning. And like this idea that butterflies are actually a warning sign from your nervous system, that that's actually not the feeling we should be trying to look for. That's not a safe feeling for our nervous system. What do you think about that? That's also something that not only I've learned from that book and that doctor, Harville Hendricks, but then people talk about it on TikTok, and I'm watching a lot of TikToks about that kind of stuff. Therapy Jeff, this type of thing. So let me know what you think about that. I think that's a big thing because I've always had this immediate, when I find the person that I end up being in a relationship with for way too long, 
it's always that feeling immediately. And I think now it's like, oh God, don't trust that feeling. That's the wrong feeling. Wish we valued and prioritized finding connection with community over finding the one. Absolutely. I think that's another really important thing is I think a lot of us, regardless of who we're attracted to gender wise, we are prioritizing or centering that thing. Like women, heterosexual women have prioritized centering men our whole lives. And you know, even if you're not heterosexual, I'm sure you've recognized you might center the opposite sex, which is interesting because of patriarchy and misogyny and all the programming. This is something I'm really diving into because I realize all the fucking hangups and programming and brainwashing, and I really would like to get rid of that. Okay, hang on. Vegan mom and son, always good to discuss goals as a couple, see where they align. Yes, I think that's maybe an address to the age difference thing. Um, Skmerlino, he says, stop, what am I doing? <laughs> They told me to love myself, backfired. No one loves me more than me. I mean, that's ultimately true. I think that no one should love you more than you love yourself. I don't know, I'm sitting with that one. There's Stevie, they spy the furry pets, Stevie. I'm behind on question. Okay, let's go over here. P keys, as I'm getting older, it's so hard to find someone who is genuine and in it for the right reasons. I'm slowly learning to accept that maybe I was meant to do life on my own with fur babies. This is another side of TikTok I'm on of women just, oh, stop to the person saying Ronald McDonald. Yeah, go, go away. Can I block them? Whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, that women, I think, are, as we're getting older, late 30s, we're realizing that being single and like prioritizing ourselves is much easier than prioritizing a relationship. Um, and... You know, even as someone who's became a mother, it's like, do I want to take care of two children or do I want to take care of one child? So it's like, that was my reality. Um, and I'm much better for it, for having what happened happen because that's my realization. I think a lot of women are in the same boat. Um, I'm just reading comments on YouTube. Okay, how do I block this person? They're being so rude. Remove. Just annoying, like just go away. Hang on. Pin message, add as moderator, hide user. There. Ha <laughs> ha. Report. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, hate speech. Are you asking if my baby looks like me? Yeah. Now, I haven't been showing my baby on the internet, um, except to actually the members of Eat It By Hopper Food. Um, and he looks like me with blonde hair. My baby has blonde hair. It's almost two. Um, okay, I caught up here. Yes, I can hide the trolls. They're hidden. Kelby's birthday is today. Happy birthday, Kelby. Okay. Odd Burger Fast Food is here. What up? Tammy's Vegan Kitchen. Hello. Tammy's Vegan Kitchen. I'm 54 and can't wait to be single again. <laughs> but need to become self-sufficient. Oh. I mean, this is another thing. I wonder if there's any, if you want to share anything, Tammy. Maybe it might be helpful for other people. But it's a little bit like that. I think... Again, older women who have been maybe been married or in partnership for a long time then find themselves being too dependent on their partners and then they feel trapped and they can't get out, especially if you've been financially dependent on somebody. I don't know your situation exactly, but I hear that story a lot. And then it's like, yeah, you do need to become self-sufficient because what if this person just flat out ditches you and leaves you with nothing, which is often the case. And then, yeah, what do you do? So I'm definitely determined to... I mean, I've never been financially dependent on anybody or dependent on them for much, which also maybe is the problem is that I'm like hyper independent. So then I'm really like 
don't even want your help, <laughs> which then makes a man feel emasculated, but like get over yourself. <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks for liking my hair, Mally, Mally, Mally. Um, so let me give you a quick little update. I was on the apps dating. It's a freaking nightmare and I want to be done with it. So my boo boo was away for a couple weeks with his dad and I was like, I have all this time. And so I'm going to like do stuff for myself and go on dates and do whatever. And it was extremely hard to even get a date, uh, because nobody wants to actually ask you out. They want to just chit chat on an app or basically say nothing. The main thing I'm encountering is men say absolutely nothing. They say hi, and then they don't ask a question. And look, I can ask a thousand questions all day long. I used to be an interviewer. I'm so curious. I have a million questions all the time, but I don't want to run the combo. I don't want to be the leader. I don't want to have to put in all the effort. I need to see you make some effort. And then I, so nobody puts in any effort, okay? So that, I don't know. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think, I'm sorry, I'm reading like weird um, comments on YouTube. Um, Yes, I look like Carly Rae Jepsen. That is true. Someone is quoting, call me maybe. Um, Roger said he'll be my moderator. That's fine. There's not that many people I can moderate these, these spammers. Uh, Billy Bly said I've been on match about three months, pure garbage. Yeah, look, I went on the apps not to find a partner or a boyfriend, okay? That's not why I went on the apps. I went on the apps to see if I still knew how to be a single person. I went on the apps to see if I still knew... Um, if I still just knew how to, you know, play the game. And what I've learned in a very short amount of time is absolutely I do. But everybody's trash. Like, these men are trash. And I don't know what they're doing on there. I mean, they're obviously on there just for hookups. And yes, we did that a couple of times. That was the purpose of this. To sort of get out the friggin' energy, okay? But... Okay, people are talking about shitting themselves on YouTube. What a garbage place. What's happening? I'm going to have to turn that one off. Okay, people are talking about going diarrhea on the toilet. I mean, usually I like shit talk, poo talk, but not with strangers. I usually do that with people that I, I know very well. Um, so, yeah, I don't, you know, the apps are kind can be fun, and then they get very old, like, very fast. And I haven't even been on there that long, so I'm just like... You know, now that my child's been home and I've been co-parenting again, I don't have time. I'm not even on there. I'm not swiping. I'm not doing anything. So it's like, it's only when I seem to have like that solitude, which really doesn't happen. It was kind of a weird thing that he went away for two weeks. Um, and then when I'm traveling on my own, I'm working. So I'm not, and I'm, I'm you know, halfway around the world. So I'm not going to be using apps uh, when I travel. I'd say it's the same for gay men on the apps. God, isn't that annoying? But I mean, really, they are for hooking up. They're not for finding a perfect match or a partner. I mean, I guess you could, you said you were on Match.com, though, or someone did. And I thought Match.com was for people who were actually more intentional and, like, were looking for relationships. Um, is what a Scorpio thing? I am a Scorpio. What's a Scorpio thing? Shez Ray. Scorpio's, he literally says, I won't let you work full time. Oh, no, Tammy. No, Tammy, just get your own job. Hi, Emily. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. We're just having a little gal chat, talking about dating, talking about bullshit. What's slowly, is slowly a dating app? Okay, YouTube is full of people wanting me to come to Jesus and blah, blah, blah. I think I gotta get out of here. If anyone has any uh, legitimate questions on the YouTube feed, let me know. Uh, the book I mentioned is called Getting the Love You Want by Harville Hendricks. Interesting, good read for if you're in a relationship, read it together. Or if you're not, it's good prep while you're in between relationships. It's interesting psychology on why you attract the person that you attract um, and how to kind of break patterns also. Often there's a pattern, right? Oh, I'm missing, I'm missing Shezray's my mom is like that girl power oh the hyper independence yes that is a scorpio thing <laughs> and i think the shadow no i don't think there's a shadow to the scorpio being hyper codependent but we are very loyal so if we like you and we've like latched on and like hooked in 
there's like no letting go. And sometimes that works much, much, much to my detriment. It means I can't walk away from something when it's really bad for me. I want to see it through. I want to work it out. This is what happens to me in relationships. When I should have friggin' left way, way, way before we got to that level of conflict. But I just hook right in and I can't be told otherwise. So that is a terrible quality of my Scorpioness, I will say. Any other Scorpios out here? Scmerlino, are you a Scorpio? You said Scorpios rise. Scorpios really get a bad, sometimes everyone's like, ooh, Scorpio. And then other times people are like, ooh, Scorpio. I'm a very true Scorpio. I'm November 3rd, so I'm an early November, I'm an early Scorpio. Anyone else out there? The Slowly app is to write letters and it's fun getting to know people in a slow way. Interesting. I'm not a very slow person. Maybe I should be. Maybe I need to slow the fuck down. Um, <laughs> uh, that could maybe be a benefit to me. <clears throat> I'm going to stay on Instagram. Don't worry. Thanks for watching if you're here. My mom stayed in a relationship, 12-year relationship with my dad. She means since day one. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Smirlino, Steven, hello. Yeah, too loyal we are. I call my dog Steven, even though it's Stevie, but when I'm mad at her, I go, Steven! Another Scorpio, Lola Tuzik. Hello from Newcastle over here. Scorpio is the most complicated sign, are we? We're complicated, but if you take the time and take the interest, it's quite rewarding also. Big risk, big reward. Because of our loyalty. Roger said, what should I get my partner for Valentine's Day? She's coming home soon. Well, hurry the hell up, Roger. Time is a-wasting. You better get her something. Go get flowers. Just go to Trader Joe's, $14.99, dozen roses. No big deal. And then order dinner or make dinner. Go to hopperfoodblog.com and find a recipe. <laughs> um, I would just order dinner. But, like, yeah, you better do something. I would have it ready when she comes home. Don't ask her what she wants, blah, blah, blah. You know what she wants get it okay anyone else would like to take that advice hurry up okay the day's almost done it's 2 30 pacific time <laughs> billy i'm from western pennsylvania what area are you from matches garbage the way they try to match i'm a i don't know what sign that is billy and no christian lady wants me because i'm into astrology <laughs> so yeah christians and astrology don't mix i mean whatever you can like a little bit of both uh, I'm from LA. Well, I'm from Canada, but I guess you don't follow me because you're like, don't know anything about me, but that's okay. We love a Scorpio on our side. They love hard. It's true. What else? Who else is out here? What are you saying? I'm 34 years old. Saki, I'm 34 years old, breaking up with my boyfriend who has been together for over seven years soon because he doesn't want to marry. Shouldn't feel rushed, but I want kids. Okay, I think that's a good idea. I mean, take what I say with a grain of salt. But if you're 34, you've got a good amount of time to still find somebody and have kids and find the right person. Don't force this person to marry you and have your kids because it will not end well. Um, and if people can't make up their damn minds, get the hell out. Because I just, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no, unfortunately. That might be, that might be um, hard to hear, but I hate when I see women trying to like force the man to like shit or get off the pot and it's like get the hell out you're wasting your time they're wasting your time uh and i hate that do i like ducks sure i love all animals i'm vegan <laughs> capricorn what about capricorn one of my best friends is a capricorn love them leaders bossy actually two of my best friends are capricorn um, I'm just reading comments. Uh, willingness is everything in relationships. Yeah, you just can't, you can't force people to, look, people don't even change, okay? Like, I've gone through couples therapy with two relationships. Like, someone has to want to change. Someone has to want it as bad as you. Ultimately, nobody ever wants anything as bad as I do. I'm like, all in or all out. Elizabeth, what is my go-to dinner? Pasta. Any kind of quick pasta, I make it up on the spot. Usually it's a non-tomato-based pasta. It's some kind of lemony cream thing or garlic, chili pepper, creamy thing or olive oil type thing. I don't like a lot of heavy tomato sauce usually. 
Um, and then I'll throw in vegetables, I'll throw in like a crumbled up sausage, I'll throw in uh, sometimes. Last night I actually did this tofu that I cut up really small and I did smoke, liquid smoke, smoked paprika, um, soy sauce, cooked all that down and then added in um, uh, blended cauliflower sauce, like my cauliflower alfredo, um, and a little bit of extra lemon, so it was more lemony, and then um, toss the noodles in that and add a little bit of pasta water. Delicious. Uh, not to be a no at all, but I can tell you the strength and weaknesses of all signs. Oh, Billy Bly's into astrology, y'all. Okay, so if you're doing free readings, this is on the YouTube feed. <laughs> Uh, Aditi said, am I a private chef these days? Um, not really, actually. I actually would, I don't, okay, I don't, when I say I'd like to be a private chef, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if my schedule allows for me to be a private chef. I'm obsessed with watching these private chef in the Hamptons TikTok people and these people that are just cooking fun shit all day for some rich person. That would be so fun. But because I have a little child, I don't know that I could actually do that. Um, I took on one meal planning client, so I've been making meals for them, but actually not regularly basically it stopped just before the holidays and we haven't gotten back to it but I'm supposed to be soon sometime and other than that I only had that one client so yeah I'm kind of open to doing more of that or like yeah I don't know it's just like I'm kind of trying to expand beyond just being on the internet and sharing recipes but my latest um priority has been optimizing hotforfoodblog.com so you'll notice if you're on there a lot some of the um uh, posts are longer because I'm trying to optimize, which means for SEO, for Google, for the ad revenue. So that's what I've been working on, sitting in front of the computer all day long, like updating posts and adding photos and editing and blah, blah, blah. No problem. Thanks for watching my What I Ate in a Days. I do need to do more of those. I just have really not been into the whole video taking job part of my, <laughs> I just haven't been wanting to film videos. I don't know this person's name, but they said it's a waste of money, couples therapy. I would like to know, are you a man or a woman, and how much have you been to couples therapy? Who goes to couples therapy on this chat? Because I think if you can't work it out yourselves, maybe you're better off not together for couples. No, I disagree. I don't think people are equipped to know how to do things, and you need a therapist just like you do for yourself to like have perspective, talk through things mainly perspective and when sometimes you're in a room with a third party there's an objective person there to call out the thing get you to reflect force you to listen I mean I guess you can't be forced to listen you have to be willing to listen but I do think that it should be um, mandatory for y'all every individual to do therapy I wish it was free um, and I think it's important for couples who are really committed to building a life together to go to therapy before problems happen so that you can be just, you're actively working on a relationship. This is the thing that I think most people don't understand is that a relationship is like a whole other part of your life. It's like you have a job and you have a family and you have a partner and you have to work at these things. They don't just fall into place. And I feel like people don't, think that and it's really annoying <laughs> they think oh it's, if it's not working it's, it's like no do you, to build any skill you have to work at it or go to a lesson or read a book or whatever look Billy also never need a therapist mm, I don't know I mean expand if you like but I disagree with y'all okay Elizabeth is asking me uh, wait a sec I, I want to stick to kind of relationshipy stuff because it's Valentine's Day, which is why I hopped on here. Sorry, Elizabeth. She's asked me what I love and hate about living in LA, but I think I answered that once in an Ask Lauren on my YouTube channel. Am I on medication? What kind of set a real question? <laughs> I don't think that's anyone's business. How about that? Okay. Um, Lola said, I was married for 22 years, getting a divorce, enjoying myself, learning to love myself, love my single life, tired of giving and not getting anything in return. I hear you there, Lola. I get it. And I'm sorry that um, you're going through that, but I think you're already aware that it's probably for the better. And you know, you probably learned a lot in 22 years of marriage. And now you've got this whole other life ahead of you, which is very exciting. So in other words, I, I'm excited for you more than I am 
sorry. I mean, I think it's hard. I'm sorry I have to go through that, but I think it's more exciting than anything. Okay. Sure, Chez Ray said I've been to couples therapy, takes a lot of work, and like Lauren said, both parties need to want to change, but I think it helps with communication. Uh huh. Um, I'd rather do anything else than go to couples therapy. Yes, I think you're a man, okay? Just <laughs> guess, guessing. A real relationship needs work. It is something that you work on long term. Absolutely. Look, and I don't even know anymore how I feel about like monogamy. Like I'm not sure about it. I think I liked the idea of it or that that could be a thing. It feels safer. But like I'm starting to wonder like if it's realistic. I don't know. Is there any non-monogamy people out there? Isn't it possible to be happy without therapy? I like where this conversation is going. Yeah, I think that you can be happy, but I think when you say happy, I mean, happy is a fleeting feeling. I don't think one would be steadily happy all the time. And I think if you are, you're probably avoiding some stuff and therapy can help you confront some things. And at the end of the day, just look at what's going on in your life. You know, I don't know. What do you guys think about that question? Is it possible to be happy without therapy? How long does the honeymoon phase last? Well, I'm no expert, y'all, but the honeymoon phase is a whole lot of BS. What I'm starting to realize is the honeymoon phase is the trick to get you sucked in and attached so that you can then work on the hard stuff. Then we sit back and we go, oh, I long for that honeymoon phase. Well, the honeymoon phase was fake. That was like lust. I'm convinced, again, I, if you're joining me now, it's like the butterfly feeling is not what you're meant to feel. That's like the, the anxious nervous system response to not being safe or to warn you that you're repeating a pattern that doesn't serve you. What do you think about that? And then it gets you hooked in and attached and then you're repeating a cycle that you're not even quite aware of. And this is my experience. I would like to have it go differently in the future and see what happens then. So I don't think the honeymoon phase lasts for very long. Someone can tell me otherwise if they've got that going on, great. But I think the honeymoon phase is like the unrealistic part of the relationship. And then when that wears off, if you're just like, well, this sucks now, it's like, well, you're not ready for a relationship then. I'm sorry, Billy. That's very hard. Happy birthday, Summer, if you're watching. Okay. Couples therapy is hard, but worth it if both people want to do better and are open to being wrong and leaving egos at the door. Mm-hmm. What's the best piece of relationship advice I've ever received? Oh, my God. I don't know. What's the best piece of relationship advice I've ever received? Well, okay. Here's what I... What I, I don't know where I, this is not a piece of advice that I can like say I received from a specific place, but my new thing, it's not new, it's just like mistake that I have made is not list, not really not putting my feelings first, but putting someone else's feelings first and really ignoring a lot of red flags. Um, again, that Scorpio trait of being overly loyal and attached or hooked in and loyal and committed doesn't serve me because I will ignore a lot of problems. Um, my goal is to like work through the shit with someone who's willing and capable and excited by working through the hard stuff because I think you can do your own therapy and work on yourself and da 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 da. There's so many things you can't work on alone. You need the mirroring, you need the projection, you need the other person to like go further in the healing work. So I think. You can reach a good place single and then a whole bunch of other challenges will present themselves when you get into the relationship. And that doesn't mean the relationship is wrong for you. I think there's stuff to be learned even if it doesn't work out long term. Which brings me back to my other point about monogamy. It's like, I don't think we're meant to be in a relationship for like 40, 50 years. I don't know. Like you can only learn so much from one person. I don't know. I'm not, uh, it's not hard and fast. Like I believe that. I'm just wondering. I'm wondering if that's a thing. 
I don't believe in honeymoon phase at all. My first boyfriend and I never had that. Okay, I love that. See, I would like to know what that feels like to not have that and what happened. And like, what did you feel? I like that. Oh, I love the butterflies. Yeah, we all love the butterflies. I think it's because we are used to, I don't know what, the butterflies is a weird thing and I don't know if it's a good thing. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like working that out now for myself. I don't have butterflies. Um, with anybody but I'm just saying when I do I expect that I will and then I will want to run far far away from it because I'll be like oh don't trust that feeling that feelings never served you well <laughs> okay there's a lot of trolls on YouTube go to hell okay uh I'm sorry, I did this, sorry I did. He was like, I want, and oh, Tammy, I think your comment's getting broken up. You never told us what happened after the car crashed into my house. Oh, God. So we're litigating. We're basically suing the insurance company that represents the cleaning company. We asked for a settlement, they offered crap, and we're going to litigate. So I don't know where that's at. It's been two years, almost to the day that that happened. Um, and I wish it would get settled and finished, but I think it's gonna take another year at least or a long ass time until we get anything, but hopefully there's a reward at the end of compensation because those people are fucked and they fucked up everything. Like a car literally crashed into my kitchen and I was like a month away from giving birth. I'm not gonna get into it. <sighs> I'm trying to read all these rude comments about me. Okay. <laughs> 18 years first one, 17 years the other, no butterflies. Yeah, no butterflies. Is it bad to feel like your relationship is amazing and feeling content? Maybe two years into relationship is too soon. I just feel like I found my perfect path, but I wouldn't be against therapy. Oh my God, well, if you feel great, that's great. Don't even question it. I think it's funny when people question that they feel good. They're like, wait, is something bad gonna happen? Is that what you're doing? Because everyone's guilty of doing that. It's like waiting for the other shoe to drop. If you feel good in your relationship, just like be content with it. I guess I'm also, you say your relationship is amazing and you feel content. Do you feel like it's reciprocated? Do you feel like the other person feels that way? Anyways, I'm just very curious what you mean by that because I think if everything's great, then great. No point in questioning anything. And if you don't need to go to, look, if you don't feel like there's a need to go to therapy, then you don't have to. I mean, there are certainly those lucky few people who maybe are just super compatible. Uh, I certainly think that's possible. Wonder the same thing, people change. To be happy, I guess you would need to change and complement your race, which doesn't usually happen. Yes, I think uh, Shez Race, going back to the monogamy thing about staying with someone for so long, it's like, you, you know, everyone goes through ups and downs and it's like when one person's down, the other person's up and carrying and lifting up that other person's soul. But I think like, um, oh, I can turn on subscriber only mode. Can I do that now? No, probably not. Thank you for telling me that. I don't think I can do that. Okay, we're getting to 48 minutes, so I'm gonna cut this off soon. Um, Steven, we both just transitioned into dating and there was never that period of butterflies, which we were both confused by since it's expected. We're no longer together, but for the best. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mary, 39 years. Oh, that's, um, hello. Bear. Hot for food drive through. Yeah, like something from a TV show, but glad nobody was hurt. Yes, exactly like that car driving into the thing on Full House. Claudia, who said she has a great relationship, says we both feel happy. I ask all the time because I'm like, is this real? Well, I think that's great. Don't question it. <laughs> all right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little Valentine's Day, Galentine's Day kiki and hanging out here. Um, I had fun. And I guess this will go up on my page now. Thanks for joining both on YouTube. And well, at least thank you to the nice people on YouTube, my subscribers, to all the trolls out there. I will um, make sure to never do that again and turn off uh, everybody and make it subscriber only mode. Cause I don't need this hate and this riff raff on here. <laughs> Happy Valentine's day. Watch love is blind season six. That's just because I'll be watching that. That's what I'll be doing later. And also part two of the bachelor two night episode. I need to finish that also. I have a lot of television to watch, I guess tonight, but that's my plan. 
<laughs> yes, more of a heads up, Susan. I just decided to do it impromptu, but okay. Um, bye, y'all. Yeah, I want to end it before one hour. Love you too. Thanks for asking questions and being fun. And I'll see y'all soon. I'll post as soon as I can on YouTube again. Okay. Bye-bye.